So hi, I'm Kate. I'm a respiratory therapist from the pulmonary clinic. And I am here to talk to you about traveling with oxygen or traveling in general with some sort of lung disease. Now, let's make sure this works. There we go. So the first thing you need to do when you're traveling is choose a destination. There are some things that you may want to take into consideration. For example, when you are traveling, you may want to think about air quality. Uh, if you're going from here to New York City, there is a different type of air quality. There's some pollution. Alternatively, if you're going from here and you're going to be outside camping, you may be exposed to pollen or other allergens that may aggravate your breathing. Uh, you should also think about altitude. Uh, there are many different factors um, in traveling that will affect your oxygen and altitude is one of them. We also want to think about climate. We come from Vermont and it's either cold or fairly warm and humid and the temperature climate is going to be much different in Arizona. It may be much hotter but it may not be as humid. So you may want to think about what weather factors trigger your breathing and keep that in consideration when you are traveling. You may also want to think about medical facilities that will be near you. It is just good to be prepared and make sure that you know where the local facilities are, make sure that you know what your insurance covers in case you need to be seen in the emergency room. Or if it's someplace that you go often like Florida and you're a snowboard bird, please uh, make sure that you know where your local physician is just in case you need something. So there are many ways to travel as well. We'll start with car or motor home. So you should plan stops along the way. It is not easy to sit in a car for a long period of time. It's also not super great for us. We like to stretch and move. You should not be smoking, although if you're in pulmonary rehab, you're not smoking anyway. If you do have oxygen, you'll wanna make sure that you have a place in this vehicle to store your cylinders in an upright position. And you'll wanna make sure that they're avoiding excessive heat. Um, that means that you probably should not be putting them um, on your seats in the direct sun, but you could put them behind the seat on the floor. Uh, if it is very hot out, you could crack your windows just so that it lets some of the heat out of the car. On a bus or a train, you can use your portable oxygen concentrators or you can use tanks. There are some restrictions and each company has their own. There are two prong outlets available for your POC, but you do need to call ahead and talk to them so they can put you in a space where you can use that. You would want to bring a backup unit with you um, and enough batteries for four extra hours. Uh, in terms of tanks, again, if you only need, you know, two tanks to get there, you would want to bring extra tanks just in case there was a stop somewhere or some other event happened. Plane. Plane seems to be the most common way to travel. So planes do not supply oxygen. You cannot bring tanks on a plane. You will need to obtain a portable oxygen concentrator if you don't already have one. There are a few ways that you can do that. Uh, if you get oxygen through your PCP, you could con contact them and talk to them about the option of a POC. If you get it through the pulmonary clinic, you could call us as well. If you are just interested in renting one and you're not going to use a POC on your day-to-day -day life, you could contact oxygen to go uh, they are a company, they mail the devices to you, you mail them back when you return from your trip. Very easy to work with. I've worked with them several times. Um, and if you're not sure which you want to choose, that's fine. You can call your provider as well and we can talk through the options with you. When you go on a plane, it is helpful to have a letter saying that you are on oxygen, that you know how to manage your own oxygen and what liter flow you're going to be on. It's been my experience lately that not all airlines require this, but it's just helpful to have. It only takes us, you know, a day or so to get this to you, and it's just helpful to have. In terms of flights, nonstop flights could be more convenient. They are also more expensive, so you'll have to weigh the pros and the cons of that for yourself. 
it is nice if you can travel during business hours because then branch personnel is available. And you could also call airlines in general and just let them know, hey, I am somebody who's on oxygen. This is what my oxygen delivery system looks like. This is how many liters I'm on. Um, is there anything that I should know? Is there anything that could be helpful? There are um, certain people in the airport that can transport you in a wheelchair from point A to point B if you're worried about losing um, stamina or not being able to catch your breath when you're trying to rush from gate to gate during layovers. Look at that, I mentioned it here. So uh, you could prearrange these motorized carts or wheelchairs if a layover is scheduled. You could also ask when you get off the plane. It's my experience that they are usually quite accommodating. You could think about your seating arrangement. You may be somebody who wants to sit at the front of the plane so you don't have to walk all the way down the aisle. You may be somebody who decides you want to sit in the back of the plane instead so you're near the bathroom so that you don't have to get up and walk down the aisle in the flight. Uh, we suggest that you try to avoid caffeine and carbonated drinks. Um, they can just make you a little bit anxious. They can also make your stomach feel a little bloated. If your stomach is bloated, you might feel like you can't breathe as well. It just might not be a great thing while you're sitting on a plane. We also suggest that you try your POC at home. That is so that you know how it works. You're familiar with any beeps or errors that it may come up with. You are familiar with how to troubleshoot anything that may come up, change the batteries. That's a good thing to learn. Um, and also make sure that you know if you need to have an advanced check-in, if you're bringing something like a POC with you. Cruise ships. So I haven't been on a cruise ship before, but I did a little bit of research on what you could do if you were cruising and you had oxygen. So the home care company that you get your oxygen from can supply oxygen for a cruise ship. They need to have some information such as how long you're going to be gone, where you're going to depart from, where your return port is, and how many liters uh, you use and how much oxygen you typically go through. There are also um, some situations where oxygen can be delivered at a port that you're just stopping at, not necessarily your departure or return port. You would have to talk to your company to discuss all those, but they are very familiar with working through these travel situations and they could be of much help to you. There's also a CPUFFER cruise experience, which actually has respiratory therapists on it. It's specifically made for patients who do have breathing difficulties and allows them to experience a cruise without worrying about their oxygen and their healthcare needs. Tips for cruises. Make sure that you are in a non-smoking area. There are still smoking areas on a cruise. Uh, it is helpful if you are near the elevator. That means that you won't have to walk up and down long hallways. It also means that you won't necessarily need to go up or down the stairs. Um, the elevators are just easier. In terms of travel insurance, yes, it costs more upfront, but if you are having some sort of medical issue and you need to return home sooner than what you anticipated, travel insurance will cover that. The next thing on here says waiver of liability for rented equipment. Uh, there is a form that your oxygen company will ask you to sign if you are bringing their equipment onto the cruise ship. Speaking of equipment, besides oxygen, there are other equipment devices that you may or may not be bringing with you. Here we have oxygen tanks, we have a nebulizer setup, we have various inhalers, a CPAP or BiPAP machine, a POC, and then canes and walkers. So you need to figure out which of these, if any, um, equipment needs you may have. So what do you need to bring with you what do you think that you might run out of while you're on and you on the um, trip and you might need more for? So like your Spariva, you are leaving and you have three days left. You obviously want to make sure that you have another refill with you. This is just a guy who's managing all of his luggage. He may or may not have medical equipment in there, but just trying to show you that it is possible to bring this stuff with you. Plan ahead. 
it is very helpful to plan ahead. It eases your anxiety. It makes your trip easier. You know what to expect day to day. You know that if you're going to need something like refills on your medication or more oxygen while you're on your trip, that you already know where, when, and how you're going to get those things. Another thing I like to tell people to plan for is planned downtime. I know it kind of seems silly to plan time that you're doing nothing, but I find it very helpful when I go on trips to have a day where we don't have plans or have an afternoon where we don't have plans. It allows me time to rest, to catch up on, on sleep or just you know laundry, making a few phone calls so I don't feel rushed so that the next day when I do go out, I am in a much better space. In terms of coordination, planning ahead is a lot of coordination. When you travel, it is helpful if your home care company knows what your plans are. It's helpful if your pulmonologist or PCP knows as well. If it applies to you, you can let your airline insurance company or travel agent know as well. It all depends on where you're going. Your home care company likes to know what's going on because they wanna make sure that you have the proper equipment with you. You can ask about delivery to airport gates, trains, or bus stations for oxygen or other devices. Um, I will tell you that there is an additional fee for that, but your company would be able to discuss that with you. Your home care company can help you estimate your oxygen needs and what you're going to need for each day. They can make sure that the oxygen scripts that you have on file are faxed to your destination so that if you need something when you're there, they have that information handy. They can also be a familiar resource in an unfamiliar location. The physician role. We like to know when you are traveling because we can give you the permission to travel letter if you need it, which is the one I talked about before with the airline. It just says that you are capable of traveling, that this is your oxygen requirement and that you're able to manage this by yourself. Um, we can also consider giving you a supply of antibiotics or steroids just in case you get sick so that you're not having to call and wait for us to get back to you. We're also available by phone while traveling in case something else comes up and you have a question. So about seven days until travel day is the final countdown. This is when all of your hard work comes together and starts to seem like a plan. During this time, I think it's important to make a final list. Make sure that you've got everything listed that you're going to need. Start packing your bags. Gather any necessary paperwork that you need. Gather any medical supplies that you need. This is when you would find out if you need to have a refill on your Spiriva or your albuterol. This is when you would find out if you need an extra nebulizer cup. Make sure that you call your providers that you need to call so that they're aware that you're going somewhere. And then travel day. I think what's important for travel day is self care. Make sure that you are well rested. You've already done all of this preparation. You are prepared, but just make sure that you have your medications on hand. Triple check that they're in your carry on bag or they're close to you so that you don't have to worry about where they are. Make sure that you slow down, that you enjoy your trip that you do the things that you wanna do, but you do it in a way that you've planned so that you're not feeling tired at the end of the day, or you're not having to stop because you only had five minutes to walk from point A to point B and you really needed 15. Just plan to take a nice leisurely trip so that you can enjoy it and think back fondly about it. I suggest maybe bringing a friend or a family member, somebody that you trust that you can have fun with and that will understand if you need to go a little bit slower. And then of course, have fun. Some of my helpful tips for achieving those are planning for extra travel time. I've talked about this a few times in regards to going from gate A to B in the airport or making sure that you are checking in early. You could also um, just anticipate an extra 30 minutes or so for everything that you have planned. I suggest taking pictures of medical forms. Most people, if not everybody, has a cell phone. If you're bringing your cell phone with you, you don't have to worry about having a folder full of papers. You could just pull out your cell phone and you could have your medical forms there for you. Keep your medications on you. Don't put them in your checked luggage. 
and then bring your own cannula or extra length of tubing just in case you're someplace where you need to be farther away from your oxygen source. And of course, please enjoy your trip. We want you to have fun. We want you to think back about this trip and have great memories. And you can always call people when you're on vacation if you have something come up that we didn't discuss and you have questions. Your pulmonologist is available, your PCP is available, and you can always coordinate with these places before you leave as well.